Hello, good morning and welcome to today's Sunday Online. Pete and I are back from a few days break. We're so grateful to all of you who took the time to pray for us over that time out. It took a couple of days to unwind, but we really did manage to switch off and we feel that we're stepping into this week refreshed and refocused, which is great. I was thinking this morning about some of the things I miss about our Sunday gatherings. You know, those times pre-lockdown where we were all able to come together as family. One of the things I really miss is seeing our children with their inflatable air guitars jumping up and down and dancing in praise and worship with their streamers flying about. Uh, I just miss the, the chaos and the wonder and the beauty of us coming together as family. I also really miss the sound of your voices. You know, singing worship by myself or even with Pete in our living room is just not quite the same as hearing all of our voices resonate together. Uh, the harmony, the inevitable few voices that seem to resonate a little more loudly than others. I miss that so much. I miss the opportunity for us to pray together and I miss our conversations over coffee, just the chance to flit around and catch up with different people and find out how you're all doing. But you know what? I want us to be encouraged this morning because even if we're not physically able to gather in our building all together, we are joined together as family today. We are every bit as much a family as we are when we gather in one place together. We are joined together by Jesus. And so as we experience this Sunday online in disparate places, let's be reminded and encouraged that we are no less the church because we're not gathered in a physical building. We are the church and we are being salt and light wherever we find ourselves. And the Lord is directing us forward together as one. There is a beautiful strength of unity in this Skylark family and we're so very delighted and proud of each and every one of you. How you're making the best of a difficult situation and how you're choosing to arise and shine and be the church. I'll be back at the end with some really great updates some testimonies of stuff that's happening or that has happened this last week and of course, sharing some exciting news about our forthcoming Skylark Big Quiz Night In. I'm sure you can't wait for the next instalment. But for now, let me introduce our speaker for this morning. Our message is brought to you today by the incredible Pete Sims. Hello, everyone. It's great to be speaking with you this morning. And I want to start with a little story. And it's a story that is about intrepid behaviour that kind of turns a little bit wrong. It goes a bit wrong in the end. Um, a few years ago, before Sarah was born, but we still had Aria, um, we went on holiday, Nikki and I and the family, with a couple of other families from the church. And one morning, Ed Wells and I decided that we wanted to see the dawn awaken over the new day. You see, we had gone to Yorkshire and we were staying in this beautiful cottage with the Yorkshire Moors just behind us. And so we thought, let's take advantage of this. So I downloaded an Ordnance Survey app onto my phone and we planned this route. And we would walk this amazing path that we planned and end up on the top of one of the moors, able to see the sunrise over a brand new day. It was going to be exhilarating. It was going to be wonderful. We set off in a sort of half light, just a bit darker than that. And we started our walk on the footpath, which very soon ceased to be a footpath anymore. And gradually we found ourselves trudging through really boggy moorland. It was really difficult to climb and we didn't really know where we were. We weren't really very accurate to footpaths. They'd all seemed to have vanished. And so at one stage we were climbing up thinking if we can just get to the top of this ridge, we're going to see the dawn break. But dawn is very soon. It's only a few minutes away. So we've got to get to the top of this, this moor. Suddenly Ed said to me, Pete, do you think that's dawn behind us? And we turned round and we were completely in the wrong place. 
the dawn was breaking behind us. We were looking forward over the hill to this new day, but it was already happening over here. It was such a cloudy day, you could barely, barely tell it. We were looking, is that dawn? It does look like dawn. Yeah, I think we've missed it. Oh, nightmare. Ed had been standing in something terrible that to this day, he still can't get out of his boots. It was a disaster. And while we were on this footpath thing, this route, um, I took a screenshot of where we were because I just found it hilarious. Take a look at this. That's brilliant, isn't it? That it even shows we're looking the wrong way. <laughs> Nowhere near the path we should have been on. We didn't set out to get lost. We set out with such great intentions, but being lost kind of took over us. It overtook us. We didn't choose it. When we were kids, we always used to go on holiday to the same location. So we'd go to the Lake District often and we went to the Isle of Wight often. I know some families do that. We used to always go to this little beach in the Isle of Wight called Steep Hill Cove near Shanklin, which is near to Ventnor. Does that mean anything to anyone? Does anyone know of Steep Hill Cove? Well, it was a beautiful place and we used to have a dinghy, not the sort of dinghy that's hard, rubber and amazing, but you know, the sort you'd blow up and spend hours blowing up on the beach before you got into it, that kind of dinghy. And it used to have a ring on the front of it, a bit like uh, a ring in a bull's nose. And my dad would tie rope to this dinghy and we would go out to play in it, but we would always be at the end of a rope. Dad would paddle up and down the beach. We'd want to go deeper, but no, as far as the rope would allow us to go, that was as far out as we, we could travel. If I compare that to a story I heard this week from a friend of ours in church who, when they were five, went on a family holiday to Cornwall and were just relaxing in a rubber ring. They uh, just shut their eyes and enjoyed floating around. And before long, they opened their eyes and realised they were nowhere near the shore. They drifted out to sea. Their dad was swimming frantically after them, calling their name, trying to catch up as this beautiful five-year-old, completely oblivious, had been drifting away from the shore. And now I understand why Dad had us on a rope, because he can't swim. If we'd have gone anywhere, we were stuffed. So thank you, Dad, for having us on a rope all those years. But my theme today, on the overarching theme of Follow Me, is be deliberate or drift. Deliberate or drift. You see... It's easy to drift at sea because everything is moving. Waves on the surface can cause you to drift, of course. The things you can see that bump into you. The undercurrents can cause you to drift. Those things that you can't see. And life's like that, isn't it? We can set a course of action, like following Jesus more closely, or anything else for that matter, maybe getting fit or eating healthily, and suddenly we get hit by an unexpected wave that knocks us off course or an undercurrent that we can't see can cause us to drift away from our best intentions. When it comes to doing life with Jesus and responding to his call to follow him, most of us who are listening to this, and me included, are up for that journey. We have said, yes, Lord, we are up for following you. We want to follow you. Maybe you're listening and you've never said yes. But you're up for it. Today is a great day to do that, let me tell you. But either way, it can be really easy for us to have amazing intentions and to say yes, but over time to drift away from Jesus, to drift away from his plans and his purposes for our lives, to drift a bit away from intimacy with him. And maybe that's where you find yourselves today. I know that many times in my journey, I have had good intentions, but I've found when I looked up, I have drifted away a bit from God's best plan. And I've mentioned before in church that we only need to be a few degrees out. And as we go on our journey, we end up further and further away than where we intended to be. So I've told you two stories from my life and from a friend's life. And now it's time to tell you a story from the Bible. So would you turn with me to Luke 15, 1 to 7, and I'm going to read from the NIV. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering round to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. 
Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbours together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. And then he goes on to explain what that means in kingdom terms. It all seems a bit exaggerated. Losing one sheep out of a hundred, going off to find it, searching and searching and searching until he finds that sheep. And then going home and not just sticking the sheep back with the others, but having a party, celebrating that that sheep has been found. You see, the sheep in the story, that's what I want to look at now. The sheep was not a rebel. The sheep did not set out that day to say, I am going to ignore the shepherd, the source of all my food, the one who protects me and leads me into green pastures. I know I'm egging it a little bit, but it wasn't a rebellious sheep. It was just a sheep just doing a little bit of grazing over here, a little bit over here. The shepherd calls for the sheep and off they go. But this one's thinking about other things, concentrating on just finding that lovely bit of grass. And before long, this sheep has found itself drifted away from the flock and drifting away from the shepherd. You see, this isn't the prodigal sheep. This isn't the story of a rebellious sheep who has said, I don't want any more to be with the sheep or, the, or with the shepherd. Not at all. It's just drifted. And perhaps like me, you have had times in your life when you're not as close to Jesus as you'd like to be. And it's not because of rebellion. It's not because you have decided deliberately to go your own way. There are times when we do that too. But perhaps for many of us today, all that's happened is that we have taken our eyes off the ball a little bit and found that we have drifted away through circumstance, through not being aware, through waves just buffeting us a bit off course, through undercurrents in society just pushing us a little bit away from God's best plan for us. You see, it's a challenge that if we don't deliberately choose to stay close to the shepherd we inadvertently choose to drift let me say that again if we don't deliberately choose to stay close to the shepherd then we inadvertently choose to drift got an example of that from lockdown you know on many occasions I have said that we as a family have gone for walks every day during lockdown. Our nature trail 5k that's been amazing looking for ladybirds and butterflies meeting and falling in love with Loggy. Loggy is a dear friend of ours. Don't tell me that Loggy is just a fallen tree. Oh no because Loggy as you know gives us cake and ice cream every time we visit. But anyway we have said that Going on that walk as a family is something from lockdown that we do not want to lose after lockdown. That has become really important to us. And I know for each of us, there will be things since the end of March that we think, you know, although the whole period has been tough, we are wanting to keep this bit in our lives. We don't want to let this go. So we made that decision for our walk. Aria went back to school two, three weeks ago, full time in reception. And we thought, right, we'll have to do our family walk when we pick her up from school. But unfortunately, she's been really exhausted after school because she hasn't been used to going in and she's only young. And suddenly our walk has disappeared. Nikki and I sometimes go in the evenings on our own. One of us stays here to babysit and the other one goes for a walk. But the family walk at the moment, and it's only at the moment, we've lost it. You see, we... If we don't make a deliberate decision, we will drift away. And what's happened is that we are drifting back into what was, rather than making a decision in that circumstance to go into the new, just like we decided to. And when Jesus says, follow me, there are, there are more than two responses. We could say, wait, not yet, not now. But let's imagine there were just two responses. Yes, Lord, I'll follow you. Or no, I don't want to. This message is for those of us who have said yes, even if that's today, but then we've found that we've drifted off. We've just moved away because we haven't daily decided to follow Jesus. We have to be deliberate about our relationship with Jesus. How, do we, how are we going to do it then? How do we do this? Because, OK, cool. We said yes. We don't want to drift. So what do we do next? Well, I think that the first thing we can do is to give Jesus, give Holy Spirit, give our Father in heaven an invitation 
to be at the centre of our day, every day. You see, choosing to follow Jesus, as Matt so brilliantly told us last week, is not a do it once and it's done for life. We have to deliberately choose on a daily basis, as he was saying, to deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow Jesus. Whatever that looks like for us. Listen to that message because it was brilliant. But we also need daily to say, Jesus, be the centre of my day. Holy Spirit, come and fill me and be the very centre of my day. Guide my footsteps today. Guide my conversations today. I choose to follow you today. Lord, give me opportunities to love others and to show them your goodness today. I choose to draw close to you for comfort, for protection, for sustenance, for guidance, because you are my shepherd. And I do that today, not just in 1989, February the 12th, when I got baptised. That's not it. Daily putting Jesus right back at the centre. If you feel that you have drifted at all over the last weeks, months, even years, put Jesus back at the centre of your day, every day. And what happens next is the challenge of obedience, because once you start saying, guide my footsteps, guide my conversations, he will do that for you. And he will put situations and circumstances in front of you where he wants you to be his voice, his hands, his feet, his mouthpiece. He wants you to make a difference, to be salt and light in the world. And so the next thing that happens is the challenge of obedience in both the small things and the big things of life. Sometimes we think we only need to be obedient in the big things, what job we're going to do, where, you know, where we're going to move house. We might involve God in those decisions, but actually he's really bothered with the small stuff. And he wants us to learn to say, yes, Lord, I'm going to do that. You say it, I'm doing it. Learning to say yes is such a key thing in deliberately following Jesus. There's a passage from Hebrews 12 that speaks about us running our race. Let me read that for you now. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, not the race marked out for someone else, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Sometimes that pioneer and perfecter is called the author and perfecter the one who is actually writing our story. We are to fix our eyes on Jesus every day. That's how we deliberately choose to follow him rather than drift away. You know, in athletics and in Formula One and in cycling events, whatever it happens to be, there is always a team behind the athlete or the sports person. If a Formula One driver wins a race, the team has won the race. Even if a 100 metre sprinter sprints a race there is a, and wins that race, or even if they don't win, there is a team behind them of physios, of trainers, of coaches. There are so many people involved behind an athlete or a sports person. And so what I want to encourage you in today and encourage myself in today is for us to be able to run the race that has been set before us we need to know that we need a team behind us and we need to be somebody else's team too. Who is going to cheer you on in your race? These are really important questions to hold us accountable, to hold us on track so that we don't drift away from what we've decided to do. Who's going to cheer you on? Who is going to help you when you are hurting? Who is going to support you when you want to give up? Who is going to laugh with you or cry with you on this journey of life? Who is going to spur you on and sharpen you? Who is going to pick you up and dust you down on your journey? Who is going to warn you when you're drifting off course? We need people calling out to us and helping us stay on track. And who can you do that for? Who can I do that for? Here we are at the end of June in 2020. Lockdown is continuing. The government are starting to make new arrangements for what church reopening could look like. But we have no idea when we are going to be able to gather again in the way that we know it. And so we are coming up with a plan to help us to deliberately stay on course with Jesus. 
What we are going to do over the next few weeks and months is to get everybody in the church into groups of three or four with running buddies so that we can be supported on our journey and do the very things I was just talking about. Cheer each other on, pick each other up, keep each other on course. And even beyond lockdown, we think that that is going to be invaluable for helping us in our discipleship and in doing the things that we want to be able to do without drifting off into the things that we don't want to do. So watch this space. That is coming soon. There's one more thing to say before I close, and that is this. If you feel like you have drifted slightly away through no fault of your own, it just seems to have happened. There is one beautiful part of the lost sheep story that I haven't mentioned yet. And that is the sheep doesn't do all the work to get back into alignment. The shepherd is sweating to get there. He's searching. He's left the 99 and he is looking for that sheep and he is looking for you. He wants to pick you up, to carry you back to the flock and to rejoice and celebrate that you are back again. So it's not all about your own hard work. Yes, we can do our part, but know that Jesus has come looking for you to bring you back in. Let us follow Jesus by deliberately choosing to do it, deliberately aiming our lives in that direction. Remember that if we don't do it deliberately, we inadvertently choose drifting away. And none of us want to do that. You take care of yourselves. I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you really soon. See ya, bye. Thank you so much, Pete, for that incredible message. I know that for some of us this morning, we will really be feeling the need to respond to what we've heard. And I want to take a moment for us to do that today before we rush on to updates. Let's just stay a while in this place and think about where in our hearts and in our relationship with Jesus, we need to pay some attention to our relationship with him. I think for some of us, we'll be able to identify with what Pete shared about drifting. And it may not have been an intentional thing like Pete explained, but it may just have been taking our eye off the ball for a moment and just somewhere along the line, stopping making those choices to follow Jesus minute by minute, day by day. And we may have found ourselves in some unfamiliar places and spaces as a result of that. If that's you today, I'm going to pray in a moment and I'd love to pray for you and to lead you back into that place of just intentionally choosing Jesus. For some of us, perhaps we've been listening and we feel ready to take that step to follow Jesus today. Maybe you've been chatting with friends who are part of this church family or part of another church family. And maybe you've been listening in to our sound bites or a whole host of other stuff. And you just know, I want to follow Jesus. If that's you today, I'd love you to join in this prayer too, to reach out today and say, you know what, Jesus, it's time. I want to follow you. And I will be agreeing with you as you pray today. And I know that the whole of heaven will be leaning in and rejoicing as you make that decision to come home to your dad in heaven this morning. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you love us so much that you would leave the 99 to come after us and for anyone this morning who feels they have drifted or are drifting that finds themselves in unfamiliar territory feeling lost feeling confused feeling disorientated i thank you that you are that good shepherd who is pursuing us with your love today who is reaching out to us and extending that hand of love and embrace and friendship today who wants to gather us back in and bring us back into the center of that place of feeling connected to you, of knowing that we're loved and of knowing that we can do this. We can continue to walk forward and follow you well. So I pray restoration over every relationship with you this morning that feels disjointed or feels fragmented or feels under pressure or even feels distant and remote. I pray right now, God, you would bridge that chasm as we reach out our hand to you. You would take a hold of our hand and you would lead us forward. 
that we would know that there is more than enough grace available from you today for anything that we may have done or anything that we may not have done that has led us to this place of drifting. Would you bring us back into that beautiful place of friendship and connection with you? And Lord, for those who today are feeling like, I'm ready, I know I want to follow Jesus. I pray that as they reach out to you in this moment, in the stillness of their hearts, as they reach out and say, Jesus, I want to know you, that you would meet them just where they're at today, that your Holy Spirit would flood into their lives, that they would know that they are changed because they made that decision to say, I want to follow you, and that you would show them how to take each next baby step, one after the next, to follow you well, that they would hear your voice today, affirming them and leading them forward. Thank you for each and every person watching this Sunday online today. May we step into all that a relationship with you offers us today. And may not one fall by the wayside, may not one straggle and struggle on the, on the margins. Would you bring each and every one into your embrace today. Amen. You know, if you decided that you want to follow Jesus today, we would love to hear from you. Please do make contact with us, whether it's via Messenger, whether it's via Instagram, whether it's by good old fashioned email. We'd love to help you take some next steps in your journey with Jesus. Or if you've been connecting with a friend who knows Jesus, why don't you ask them what that decision means and let them help you find your way forward. We know that all of heaven is rejoicing over that decision today. I'm here to just provide a few really exciting updates. You know, chatting to the team this week, there's such a buzz in the air about some of the incredible opportunities that are on the horizon and some of the things that we've been doing week in, week out, which are really having an impact on our community as well. You know, normally as a church family and as a network of churches across Skylark International, a whole load of us would be going to an event called New Wine. And it's something we love to do over the summer. It's a great place for us to hang out together as family, but also receive some great teaching, seminars and input. Well, New Wine has been cancelled in terms of a physical gathering this year, but they're breaking out. And over the weeks where we would be at New Wine ordinarily, there's going to be a whole heap of fantastic seminars and online content for us to tap into and what's super exciting is that our youth pastor Jen Forbes John has been asked to host the mental health stream for youth and we know she's just going to do such a phenomenal job with that so please pray for Jen over the next few weeks as she begins to prepare the online content for that and she gathers this, those who are taking part in seminars that she would really be the hostess with the most desk. Jen, we're cheering you on. Pete and I also have the privilege of hosting the adult mental health stream. And we're going to be um, hosting three different seminars that are taken by some incredible, incredible practitioners in this area. Okay. But we'll also be hosting an online live conversation where um, some psychologists and people who are real experts in this field will be able to take questions and open up what has historically been a fairly taboo subject in the church. I know not so much for us as we have been trying to open up that dialogue as a church and as a network, but I know it's going to be really valuable for us to learn from. So just wanted to give you a heads up so you can be praying for that. Another really cool opportunity has come for the wonderful Charlotte Clayton. Now, Charlotte heads up a self-esteem course called Flourish, which um, goes into local secondary schools, but which also we've now given out to other churches so that they can be um, talking to young girls about self-esteem and using our course as a springboard to help with self-image, with body confidence, and with some of the key root issues that will really help to build resilience into girls so that they can become everything that they are called to be in the future. 
Charlotte has been asked by an organisation called Freedom2, led by Mel Manning, who used to be part of Skylark and is now part of Hub Church in Woodford. Uh, Mel has set up an incredible organisation and Charlotte will be doing an Insta Live at 10am next Tuesday with Mel, where they'll be talking about some of the issues facing young girls today when it comes to body confidence, when it comes to self-esteem, when it comes to being able to flourish in every area of life. I know that's going to be of real interest to any of you who work with young people or who parent young people, or perhaps you'd just like to tune in so that you can support Charlotte and learn more about the work that Freedom2 and Flourish are doing with girls. If you'd like to do that, there's more details for, to follow on our social media pages, but I know that Charlotte is going to be a fantastic voice speaking into some of those issues, and Charlotte, we're cheering you on too. We also want to celebrate some of what's happening with different members and streams in our church. You know, Senior Gold, that's the gathering that takes place for some of our more elderly members of the church family. They've just been doing the most phenomenal job during lockdown to resource and to connect one another. Mike Collins, he's an absolute hero, church. Do you know what he's been doing? He's been embracing the change and he's been using technology. So he has been recording people using the phone. So he's been talking to them over the phone, recording their prayers, recording their testimonies, recording their messages, collating them all onto a CD and dropping them through the door of those members of Senior Gold so that they can stay connected one to another. What a beautiful thing to know that we have those that will go the extra mile to ensure that everybody is included, that everybody knows they are loved and everybody is able to remain inspired and connected to Jesus. Freddie and your team, sorry, we call Mike Freddie, just in case you think I've forgotten his name. Uh, we have a little nickname for him, it's a long story, but Mike, AKA Freddie, we just want to thank you and your team for all that you are doing to resource, to encourage, and to keep our elderly and vulnerable congregations so well supported. You're amazing. This week, we've been able to bless 18 families and individuals through the giving that you have made into the pastoral fund. They have received some really, really beautiful, boxes of provisions and supplies. So thanks to you and thanks to all of the volunteers who tirelessly work week upon week to do those distributions. You are being the hands and feet of Jesus and we're grateful for you. Last and by no means least from me, we have got our second big Skylark quiz night in. It's coming on the 5th of July at a slightly different time of 8 p.m. We can't wait to gather together. Now, last time the Lawless family took those winners t-shirts. Wouldn't it be great to see someone else win this, uh, this quiz? Uh, I know that we should be taking part purely for the fun and I generally am one of those people, but you know, for those of you who are the more competitive types, come on, get brushing up on your trivia. We're gonna have a great time coming together. Bring your drinks, bring your snacks, bring your brains and have some fun with us as a family. That's all from me. I hope that you have a fantastic week ahead. Remember what I said at the start of today. We are the church and I bless you today, whether you're listening in from Skylark Church in Chelmsford, from across our Skylark International community or from another church, just know today you are loved and you are being sent into your week full of Jesus to be his hands, his feet, his mouthpiece this week. Take care.